Hello everyone. So today again here we are, we are to discuss another important topic related to NEET exams. The, this is known as the periodontal ligament. So as the name suggests, ligaments are made up of fibers. So we'll go through all the fibers that are present in the periodontal ligament and how these help the tooth structure. Beginning, it is the most important element of the periodontal ligament, also known as the principal fibers. Principal fibers forms the most important part of the periodontal ligament and they are composed of type 1 collagen. So basically, principal fibers Reticular fibers, and basal lamina. The main composition for the principal fibers is type 1 collagen. For reticular fibers, it is type and for basal lamina it is type 4. These forms the basic component of a periodontal ligament. So whenever you begin studying this, these are the important points to be considered. We will discuss fibers in details beginning with the principal fibers. Second is the elastic fibers. First we will go in detail with the principal fibers. Principal fibers, as the name suggests, include all the components that are acting in the tooth structure, which are further divided into principal fibers are of six types. There are basically six types of principal fibers. Uh, naming them in the order, the first one is the alveolar crest fibers, second is the oblique fibers, third is the horizontal fibers, fourth apical fibers, fifth transeptal fibers and the sixth one is the interradicular fibers. We will we'll be going in detail with each fiber, beginning with the first one that is the alveolar crest fibers. As the name suggests, these fibers runs from cementum in apical direction. This is very important. The direction of the fibers play a very important role in their mechanism. So these fibers runs from cementum in an apical direction to the alveolar crest. Their main function, so this is the function. This is the function that is they prevent the extrusion of the tooth. Alveolar crest uh, fibers have an important role in preventing the extrusion of the tooth and they resist lateral movement. So these are the two functions of alveolar crest fibers. Second fiber is and very important key note to be included in the alveolar crest fibers is that if you cut or incise these fibers they does not increase the mobility of the tooth. Second is the oblique fibers. These fibers run from alveolar bone in coronal direction. I will be explaining through the diagram later. These are present in the maximum number. So these fibers are in maximum number. And these fibers are most important of the periodontal ligament fibers because they bear maximum masticatory forces. Then third one is the horizontal fibers. As the name suggests, they run horizontally and they are at 90 degree from the cementum to the alveolar bone. Now we will see a schematic diagram for each fibers. Just assume this as a tooth structure. And this are the area which I am just showing this part. These is first one is the alveolar uh, crest fibers which runs in an apical direction that is this way. This is the first fiber. Second one is the oblique fibers that runs in coronal direction present in maximum number. And third is the horizontal fibers 
which runs horizontally at 90 degrees. So this is the second fibers and this is the third fibers. Then comes the fourth fiber which is known as the apical fibers. Now as the name suggests, they are arising from the root end. So they are absent in incompletely formed roots. Root end is their location. They arise from root end and are absent in incompletely formed roots. Their main function is to resist the rotation of the teeth. They also prevent extrusion and lateral movement. So these are the two functions for the apical fibers. Then comes the transeptal fibers. They are also known as the interdental ligaments. These fibers run from cementum of one tooth to cementum of adjacent tooth. That is they run interproximally. So they are also known as the interdental ligaments, also known as the transeptal fibers. So these are interdental ligament. Now their function is they have the capacity to regenerate once it is in incised during surgical procedure. So they are having no bone attachment. They don't have any bone attachment. They have capacity to regenerate. So these are very important fibers. Then comes the interradicular fibers. As the name suggests, they are from the cementum to the tooth in the percussion region. So these are, pres these are present in the percussion region. in the multi-rooted tooth. When we are done with principal fibers, the other group of fibers we have are known as the elastic fibers. They are the other groups. They are also known as the non-collagenous type and immature group of fibers. Basically, there are three types of immature group of fibers known as the oxytalin, the ileonin and the elastin. Out of which, the one which is very important is the oxytalin fibers. Oxytalin fibers runs parallel to the root surface. This is very important. So if this is the root, they run parallel to it and are attached to the blood vessels and thus they regulate the vascular flow. So oxytalin plays a very important part. Oxytalin fibers regulate the vascular flow. Their turnover rate is twice that of gingiva and their nerve supply is by the myelinated nerve fibers which lose their myelin once the neural transmission has occurred. So when we are talking about the nerve supply for the fibers, there are basically four types of nerve endings which we have to consider considering the nerve supply for the fibers. The nerve endings are divided furtherly into four parts. Basically, the nerve endings when we study, they are first one, free nerve ending. Second is Ruffini nerve ending. Third one, we have Messner's corpuscle. And fourth one is spindle like pressure fibers or endings. So each nerve ending has its own function and so we will discuss the free nerve ending first. This is the most discussed nerve ending whenever you are talking about pain because this free nerve ending deals with pain sensation. It detects pain sensation and present, it is present all over the root. So the function and the location for the free nerve endings are here. Then comes the Ruffini nerve endings which deals with temperature. It is found at the apical area. Then comes the Messner corpuscles which detects the touch sensation and this is found at the 
mid root area so it deals with the touch sensation present in the mid root area the last one is the spindle like pressure and vibration endings so the now the name itself has a hint to its mechanism spindle like pressure and vibration ending detects the pressure and it is found again at the apical area so two nerve endings are there which are found at the apical area that is the raffini nerve endings and the spindle like pressure and vibration endings these are some of the meritors extra cover the points which one must keep in mind for a new questions that may come in the neat exams so this is the summary of basically the periodontian characteristics basically in children this is very important children have some different distinguished characters from the adults which one must keep in mind so when we are discussing the periodontium periodontium includes three parts first is gingiva second is the pdl and the third are the bone and surrounding structures we'll take one at a time beginning with the gingiva gingiva in children is less stippled so stippling is less second it is more vascular that is redder than adults due to increased vascu vascularity third interdental call formation and saddle areas are seen it is more thinner less melanin pigmentation is seen in the children gingiva the attached gingiva is narrower in the primary dentition and narrower in the mandible this is very important the attached gingiva especially in children is narrower in the primary dentition and it is narrower in the mandible and the interdental papilla is shorter and rounder in children considering the periodontal ligament and the bone in the children there are six points which are very very important the first one it's wider periodontal membrane space second is there are fewer and lesser dental uh, periodontal fibers so in children we have fewer and less dense periodontal fibers compared to the adults then they are less dense and differentiated collagen fibers again in children we have less density and they are less differentiated compared to the adults due to the increased vascular supply they are more red in color and their lymphatic supply is also dense and increased they have thinner lamina uh, dura they have flatter alveolar crests compared to the adults they have flatter alveolar crests and there are fewer tubercle present in the children the another important point which one has to keep in mind is the significance of the transeptal principal fiber this is a principal fiber we discussed earlier they have the important property of regenerating that is they are also considered both gingival and the periodontal ligament fibers transeptal fibers are considered gingival as well as periodontal ligament uh, fibers and the remarkably constant finding that they are reconstructed even after the destruction of the alveolar bone so they form a dense covering even after the bone is removed after the removal of the granulation tissue during the pocket eradication procedures so transeptal fibers has an exceptional property of regenerating the key points regarding the narrow and width of the periodontal ligament are seen in such clinical conditions first we'll discuss about the narrow periodontal ligament when is it seen so the first case when it is seen are the mesial surface of the teeth due to physiologic mesial migration in case of physiologic mesial migration the narrow me periodontal ligament is created at the mesial surface of the teeth similarly at the fulcrum of rotation of the tooth teeth that are in hypofunction on which the forces are very less such teeth conditions that like unilateral chewing open bite and whose antagonists has been lost leads to narrow periodontal ligament similarly the second condition that is the wide 
periodontal ligament are seen in three major cases. When the forces are high, the periodontal ligament width is increased in trauma from occlusion in case of scleroderma and osteosarcoma. So many times MCQs are asked based on this point. This has to be remembered. The other key points which one should remember are the epithelial rests of molasses. This is very important tissue which one has to consider because many times many MCQs are being made on this tissue. These are the derivatives of the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath which may become semanticals or participate in the formation of periapical cysts and lateral root cysts. So this is very important point. Second point is the blood supply. Where does periodontal ligament derive its blood supply from? So it derives its blood supply from the apical vessels before entering the pulp. This one has to remember that it derives its apical vessels before entering the pulp, anastomosine vessels of the gingiva and transalveolar branches of the intraseptal vessels. So they, they are, these are the three points from where the periodontal ligament fibers derive its blood supply. So this is done. Then comes periodontal ligament has high turnover rate of collagen. So the rapid turnover rate of cells which occurs more towards the size of bone. So the periodontal ligament is narrowest at the axis of rotation. When we consider axis of rotation, these are the number of roots and their location of axis of rotation. As we have already seen that periodontal ligaments are narrowest in the axis of rotation region. So for single rooted tooth, the location for axis of rotation is the junction between the middle and the apical third of the root. This is the area where the periodontal ligament will be narrowest. And in case of multi-rooted tooth, it is between the roots. So interradicular region where the axis of rotation is present and the periodontal ligament will be narrowest. Considering the indifferent fiber plexus, these are the plexus which are made up of small collagen fibers and which are associated with large principal collagen fibers running in all directions from a plexus. Now we are discussing the frequently asked questions related to the topic of periodontal ligament. Again this topic is very facts based. So if you know the function mechanism of each principal fibers, you will score in the exams. So one of the question is which of the following fibers restrict the extrusion? This is the function. And this is the direct question. So out of these, the answer will be the first one because it is the function of the alveolar crest fibers to restrict the extrusion of the tooth. Similarly, all each and every fiber has its function. If you know the function of each and every fibers, all the questions will be sorted.